This is the Playdate. I've been making games for it for about 6 months or so now, and I've been trying to think of the next game that I wanted to make. I had this idea floating around inside my head for a Mario Maker type game, where you can create your own levels and share them with other people. However, there's a small issue though, there's no network API on this device. That means you can't directly download other people's levels off the internet. There is a way for you to plug in the Playdate and upload other people's files, but I thought of a different solution that could be wireless. There is no networking API, but there is a microphone, so there might be a way to send data over audio. My plan was like this, you can first create your level, then I would create a QR code on the Playdate that you can scan with your phone, which would take you to a website I've created, then you can press a button to beep out some sort of code from your phone speaker that represents the level that you've created. If you share that link with someone else, they can place their Playdate next to their phone and they can hopefully pick up the code and translate it to the level that you created. My first task was to see if I could get any sort of meaningful information from the mic. I created a simple website that would beep out the tones for different durations. I then set the playdate to record the volume of the mic every single frame, and then count the number of frames in a row the volume was above a certain threshold. I found that there were slight fluctuations because the frame rate doesn't line up perfectly, and since the frame rate caps out at 50 frames per second, there's a limit to how short a note could reliably be captured. However, it was pretty consistent starting from tones as short as 50 milliseconds, and I was able to consistently differentiate between tones that differed by about 100 milliseconds. This was important since I could now take how long a tone was and convert it into usable data. Also, it was important that the playdate could pick up on short notes, or else the data transfer would take a really long time. My idea for how the level data would work is that I would create a simple text encoding, and each letter will be associated with one type of block. Like the letter A will be assigned to a floor tile, the letter B might be a spike, and the letter C might be a bounce pad, and so on. This way, I would have the ability to encode as many different block types as there are typable characters, which with capital letters included is around 70. Then I could tile all the blocks together in a line and that would be the level. So I started thinking about how I can encode these tones into a character. The simplest would of course be directly tying the length to a character. For example, a note that's 100 milliseconds long would equal the letter A. The problem is that this format is not very data dense. So if it's the 50th character, it might take 5000 milliseconds long, a whole 5 seconds for a single block, which would make transferring long levels take forever. I decided to first test the whole concept with just lowercase letters of the alphabet. So that's 26 different characters and 26 different block types. Conveniently, for a 3 digit number that's space 3, the maximum value is 26. If that's the case, we can create a simple encoding system revolving around 3 digit base 3 numbers. If I interpret a 50 millisecond tone as the 0 digit, a 150 millisecond tone as the 1 digit, and a 250 millisecond tone as the 2 digit, I should theoretically be able to translate a string of letters into corresponding 3 digit base 3 numbers, then translate to a series of tones, and then on the playdate translate that back into numbers, then back to letters, and then to a series of level blocks. So the letter A might sound like this while the letter E might sound like this. I put together the relevant translation code into my website and also on the playdate, and here was the result. I was able to type a message into the website on my phone, then when I played the message, the playdate was able to pick it up and translate it back correctly. There's a long tone at the beginning and end to let the playdate know when the transmission started and ended. It was really exciting seeing that it worked. So with that, I took a break from this part and started working on the actual platformer. Before we get to that though, I want to quickly mention that I just released a book called The Beginner's Guide to Lua for Game Development. If you're interested in making games for the playdate or any game environment that uses Lua, like Pico 8 or for Roblox, and you're a complete beginner who's never touched a line of code, this is a great place to start to learn all the basics of programming. I don't have any sponsors, so this is one of the best ways to support the channel as well. Link is in the description. Anyways, back to making the platformer. For some placeholder art, I used this dino character asset pack and made it one bit. Then I set up a symbol state machine and hooked it up to the walking animations. You can also see that I added some gravity and collisions as well. I then added jumping as well. I'll probably add double jumping at some point as well as a lot of platformer quality of life improvements like buffered jumps and coyote time, but I just want to get the basics first. Next was to add some blocks that I mentioned earlier. I added a few simple ones like a spike, a moving spike ball, basic platforms, and an empty space block. When you hit the spikes, it just resets you back to the beginning. As I was testing this, the momentum in the air felt a bit weird, so I added some drag in the air to slow your character down if you stop holding in a direction. You might notice that the camera is jittering a bit. I'll probably be adding a smooth camera system later on, as well as tweaking the player movement physics a lot. Now it was time to try and combine these two systems together. I associated some letters with different level blocks, so I'll test it out by typing out a string of letters that represents a level and send it over to the playdate. Next, if I press B, it will take this string of letters and turn it into the corresponding level that I can play on the device. Let's say I want to change all these spikes into moving spikes. I can change these E's into F's, and when I send it over to the playdate, 
the level has changed. Eventually, there will be an in-game level editor so you won't have to manually change the level code. If you want to play around with this or take a peek at the source code, I have an early build up on my Patreon. See you next week for the next devlog on this game.